let's pray father we are so grateful to you for giving us this wonderful time that we brothers and sisters could come together to study your word to learn about you and to know you better lord lord i pray that your spirit's leading and guidance may be granted to us and our hearts and minds may be open to your revelation and speak to us through your servant o lord we may be able to perceive your voice so that we may know you personally and intimately and we may grow in relationship with you lord lead us and guide us your name shall be exalted through everything that we do and may the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you praveen and uh... Maybe I can request everyone to put themselves on mute because sometimes you got uh, these uh, uh, music coming through. <laughs> and uh, maybe Praveen, if I can just alert you, if Franklin joins, make sure that you put him on mute because sometimes I don't think he's able to do it. So, uh, right. Okay. All right. So uh, let me see. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring up my screen my uh, PowerPoint. So let me just share that screen. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, right. So I'm presuming you can all see the screen, right? Okay, good. Uh, all right. So, um, as we discuss this topic, and obviously, like I mentioned earlier, last time, Surimurti posed a question, and it is actually a, uh, a challenge uh, to many Christians that uh, people pose uh, with regards to the deity of Jesus and the divinity of Jesus. And uh, uh, one of the unique teachings of Christianity is or probably a, a cardinal and a principal teaching of Christianity is that uh, uh, the divinity of Jesus. Uh, it is one of the core doctrines. Uh, if that is denied, then uh, we believe that uh, uh, a person or, uh, or an organization that teaches uh, otherwise obviously does not hold to the uh, orthodox teachings of Christ. Now, the challenge to many Christians is even what Surimurti mentioned last time. And this is the challenge. Where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? So in other words, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, thrown in the face of many Christians. And uh, obviously, it is a quite a quizzical question. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, it makes you wonder and think, and you automatically go to try to find out where Jesus said this. And obviously, if you look into the Bible, uh, these words are not there in the scriptures. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, the, the interesting thing is, this is actually uh, a fallacy. And let me uh, move to the next screen. It's called the exact word fallacy. I uh, post there the uh, the source from where I've taken uh, this information. The exact word fallacy goes like this. All right. So just follow with me as I bring up these questions. Okay. Here is, this is a hypothetical question. And this is how the exact word fallacy goes. Uh, let's say a person called Ravi asks a question. Hey, buddy. And he's talking to, uh, uh, you know, um, someone else and he said hey buddy are you married and uh, joe the person he says yeah that's my wife over there with my kids and then ravi says are you married and joe gets a little upset and he says uh, i just told you but ravi says no you didn't say i am married in those exact unequivocal, unambiguous words. In other words, the exact word fallacy is that if you don't answer according to 
the exact words that is or that that is supposedly you should answer then you haven't answered the question apparently so that is the exact word fallacy all right now if i can uh again bring up a few more thoughts on that if you look into the bible did jesus ever say hi my name is jesus all right and so the question is can we then conclude that this means his name is not jesus can we conclude that uh, Joe, who answered, yes, you know, that's my wife, can we conclude he's not married? So uh, they are trying to trick you to think that, you know, uh, if you don't answer according to a particular pattern of words and the use of certain words, then you have denied uh, the question that's being asked. All right. So that is uh, the exact word fallacy. Let me just bring up few more thoughts. Here is uh, another set of uh, questions. Are you single? The question is asked. Yes, I am. But is he single really? According to the exact word criterion, people will say he is not single because he did not say I am single. All right. So this is the exact word fallacy. Now, most of you may have heard of a YouTuber uh, his name is uh, David Wood. I think you probably heard of him. He is a he is a apologist, and he uh, takes on uh, uh, the Islamic questions, you know, against or uh, Islamic. Uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, quest the 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 the, um, uh, the questions against Christianity. And so, what he says is, what you must do is you must put a counter challenge when somebody asks you. Where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? He says, the way to answer is a counter challenge. What is the counter challenge? Where did Jesus say, I am only a prophet, don't worship me? <laughs> so that is how you answer this question. Uh, because this question is not a genuine question. It is only to try to fool you, to think that, Jesus is not God because he did not say these exact words. So I hope I was able to help you with the exact word fallacy. All right. Now, having answered that, and maybe Surya Murti may have some thoughts on that and he can come back uh, during our discussion. But let me move to what uh, I would like to pose. And the question is, why do Christians believe Jesus is God? And what I want to do is, I want to go to how God is described and understood or defined uh, universally. In other words, we want to, we don't want to only talk about the Bible. We want to ask how is God described universally? Uh, how do we all accept the fact that God is what and uh, how we describe God? All right. So, um, uh, uh, but I will bring up scriptures to prove this. And so obviously the, the, the focus is on Jesus. Can Jesus qualify to be God as universally understood who God is? All right. So uh, obviously we won't bring in the Trinity and all of that. That is that is very, very Christian. So, um, so if Jesus Christ fits that description, the universal description, then he he is indeed God. All right. So that's the uh, uh, that. Of course, I'll have to use the Bible for that. So but everybody will agree that God is or can be described in a certain way. Now, let me give you some scriptures for that. Uh, so does Jesus Christ fit the description of God? Here is a verse from Isaiah 44. And you could say the Jews believe this. Obviously, Christians believe this, and I would also say that uh, many other religious people from other faiths believe this. Here is Isaiah 44, verse 6, which says, This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Here is a description of God. How is God described? The first and the last. Now, Obviously, an interpretation there would mean that 
he ha he has no beginning and he has no ending right he is timeless when he says i am the first and i am the last he is timeless he is eternal now the jews believe that christians believe that i am sure hindus would believe that muslims would believe that anybody would describe god as timeless no beginning no end he is eternal all right now what does jesus christ claim let's see what jesus christ claims revelation 1 and verse 17 says when i saw him now remember this is uh, john writing uh, in revelation 1 and he's describing uh, jesus because jesus is giving him the uh, it's a revelation of jesus jesus is being revealed okay so here it goes when i saw him i fell i fell at his feet as though dead then he placed his right hand on me and said do not be afraid i am the first and the last yeah notice those words underlined i am the living one was dead and now now look i am alive forever and ever all right christ is uh, uh described or you could say claims that he is the first and the last so he is claiming to be god in this revelation all right so this is one description about god now once again i there are so many scriptures here i am only taking just a few let's look at another another situation okay another verse from the bible again isaiah 42 or sorry 43 here it says i i am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and will not remember your sins now what does this mean uh here god is saying i that is god can remove your sins i can forgive your sins and i can take away your sins now will everybody believe and accept the fact that only god can forgive sins right only god can forgive sins nobody else can right so this is something that all pe people of all religions believe once again what does christ claim right we are now looking at whether jesus christ fits this description of god that only god can forgive sins all right here goes uh, uh this is taken from uh the book of uh, uh see matthew jesus says when jesus saw their faith he said to the man now you will remember the story this is the person uh, who is uh what do you call it uh, uh paralyzed or something like that right so jesus comes to heal him when jesus saw their faith he said to man he said to the man take heart son your sins are forgiven at this some teachers uh, of the law said to themselves this fellow is blaspheming here jesus is actually saying your sins are forgiven he is forgiving sin and the people understood what he was saying that he is claiming what only god can claim that he can forgive sins and so, and then what does jesus go on to say this is in matthew 9 i but i want you to know once again i'm taking just the uh, appropriate words uh, i want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins in other words jesus is claiming that he can forgive sins who can forgive sins only god can forgive sins what is jesus claiming i can forgive sins what is the uh, automatic conclusion jesus is god all right so it the description fits jesus let's look at a few more i'm taking this from psalm 119 where it says all your words are true talking about god all your words are true all your righteous laws are eternal this is describing god what is this describing god as your words are true in other words only god is ultimately true ultimate truth okay let's look at another verse in the book of psalm uh, sorry uh, isaiah 45 where it says i the lord speak the truth i declare what is right the conclusion we can make from this or the description of god we can make from this is god is true god speaks truth god is the truth 
right? So the description of God is that He is and uh, He is true and truth in, in, in categorically. What does Jesus claim? Does this description of God fit Jesus? Let's look at John chapter 14. What does Jesus say? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. If God is the only one who is ultimate truth, notice what Jesus is claiming. I am the truth. <laughs> All right. Uh, which means to say this description of God fits Jesus. Jesus is God because he is ultimately and the ultimate truth. Let's uh, take 1 Samuel chapter 2. Reading in verse 6, it says, The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. Okay. This is a description of God. What is uh, How is God described? He can bring or he can give life. He is the source of life. And he is the only one who can give life. That is something that everybody, people of all faiths believe. Of course, he can take away life also. He brings death and makes alive. He can even take away life. He is the author of life. All right. And I'm, I'm sure you know where I'm going next, right? Does this description of God fit Jesus Christ? Well, let's see. What does Jesus claim? John chapter 11. Jesus said to her, and if you remember, this is the uh, where uh, Re Lazarus is resurrected. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And of course, he poses a question, do you believe this? So if... God is the only one who can give life because he, life is inherent in him. Jesus claims that he is the life, <laughs> right? And he also says, I am the resurrection. In other words, even if you die, uh, he is able to bring back to life. Uh, the description of God fits Jesus. That is what he claims, right? So this is why we believe that Jesus Christ uh, is God. Now, once again, uh, all of these things prove Christ to be God. Uh, uh, even though the exact word uh, criterion is not uh, applied here. All right. Let's move forward then. Uh, you know, the first followers of Jesus... Um, came to believe that Christ is God. He is God. Uh, uh, not only that Christ claimed divinity, as we have seen in all of these scriptures, and uh, all of those descriptions of God fit Jesus, people who followed him, the first followers of Jesus, definitely believe he is God. I just have a couple of scriptures. Once again, I'm sure you are very familiar with many of the scriptures in this in the bible uh with regards to how we can prove god is i mean christ is god but let's just look at uh two and one is in two peter chapter one notice how peter writes simon peter he says uh, as he writes uh this his epistle a servant and apostle of jesus christ to those who through the righteousness of our god and savior jesus christ have received a faith as precious as ours. How does Peter introduce Jesus? Our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Peter believed Jesus can be referred to as God. And so uh, the chief apostle, Peter, and uh, you know the rest of all of the apostles believed that Jesus was God. Uh, let me look look at one more. And once again, I'm just picking up a scripture where the specifically where it is mentioned, uh, Christ is God. And this I take from the book of Hebrews, chapter one, where it says, 
But about the son, he says, uh, sorry. Yeah, about the son, he says, uh, your throne, O God. Notice about whom it is said, the son, about the son, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. So Jesus, here, the Son, he's the Son of God, is being referred to as God. Your throne, O God, uh, will last forever and ever. Once again, I am not going to bring up all the other scriptures, which is very familiar to all of you, but uh, Jesus fits the description of God and his first followers believed he is indeed God. He was God and is God. I want to just bring in one more thought to you. And then I will end. Uh, and that is, I just want to talk about salvation and uh, the fact that the incarnation uh, is the uh, uh, the incarnation is the perfect plan of salvation. And there is a reason why I'm saying that. Uh, uh, what I want to bring to your attention here is that the definitely can agree that humans can never save themselves, right? Uh, human beings who are, uh, who have temporary life cannot save themselves in a way where they can give themselves eternal life. Now, I know that there are many faiths and even uh, many Christians believe that etern uh, humans are eternal because they have an eternal soul, if you remember. We used to talk of the eternal soul. Many people talk about the eternal soul, a soul that will never die. Okay. But I want to specifically talk about salvation. Now, even if you talk about soul, um, you know, that there is many interpretations to that, and I'm not going to go into that. But the question is, even if you have a soul, the question is, can humans save themselves, give eternal life to themselves? And... Uh, I'm sure we can answer, our answer will be or should be, only divinity can save humans, right? Only God, God is divine because God is in, has inherent life. Uh, you know, he doesn't depend externally on life. Humans have to depend externally for life. Uh, life is given to humans. And hence, humans cannot save themselves. And we believe that only God, who is divine, who is life in, in himself, can save humans. And here, I bring up the golden verse of the Bible. If you remember, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in, in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Uh, uh, you know, the point I want to make from this is, this is a very familiar scripture to all of us, but the point I want to make here is God specifically uh, has a, well, for lack of a better word, a perfect plan where human beings can be given life. God intended for humans to have salvation, which is well, much more than eternal life. It is, you know, we can describe salvation in many, many ways. But it is God who has engineered salvation for human beings. And how has he done that? By his son. By his son. In other words, Jesus Christ is the perfect plan of God to save humanity. It is in Christ that we can have life. And hence the incarnation, as we call it, God becoming human is the only way humans can have salvation. And through whom? Through Jesus Christ. And my argument by uh, the following is, the, the, the conclusion in my argument is that if humans can have life, salvation through Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is God. Because only divinity can give us life. All right. So, uh, I have just, uh, 
proved that uh, the exact word, uh, the exact word, uh, what do you call it, uh, criterion can be answered. The challenge that comes to us, did Christ say, I am God, worship me? Uh, no. Uh, the, those, that is a fallacy. And we can answer by saying, did Christ say, I am only a prophet, don't worship me? So that is the counter challenge you can put to those who ask that question. And then I go on to show you that the universal description of God is the fact that he only God can impart life, only God can forgive, only God is the truth, all right? And Christ fits all of those descriptions, making him God. And finally, if humans should be saved, God's perfect plan of salvation is through humanity, I mean, th through Jesus Christ, which makes him God. All right. Um, I, I want to stop there. So please uh, go ahead and ask your questions. I think, uh, Praveen, if you can just bring back the, yeah, there you are. <laughs> uh, uh, everybody on the screen. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, comments, questions, feel free. I'm not sure if Surimurti is, uh, is uh, what do you call it, convinced, but uh, let's see if he has uh, I have anything. no problem with the answer. Sorry? I have no problem with the answer. Okay. <laughs> but the way you brought it up last time, we thought. <laughs> uh, that was not my question. Yeah, okay. It was a question raised by one Indian Muslim. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, many of them bring up this question. Yeah, uh, did Jesus say, "I am God"? Uh, you know, worship me. So uh, we can put a counter challenge. Do you have any other convincing verses which uh, proves Christ is God? Yes, sir. Anil, go ahead. Yeah, I was also looking into this after Surya's challenge, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I came across these three verses from John, uh, John 8, 58. Uh, Can you read it for us? Yes, I am just going to that. <clears throat> okay, John. Uh, John eight fifty eight. Yes. Says, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Okay. That goes back to what God told uh, Moses, I am who I am. And Jesus here is claiming I am. So I think that was probably one of the most frequently quoted. And then there is John uh, John 10. Let's see. Oh, how, how about John 1 1? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about John 1 1? The yeah, word was God. God. One, two. Right. Let's see. John 10. Uh, 30 to 33. That's when the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Right. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good word we do not stone you, but for blasphemy because you being a man, make yourself God. God. Yeah. Right. And then I think the last one is John 20, I think. Uh John 20, verse 28. Yes. <clears throat> and Thomas answered and said to him, this is when Tom, he asked Thomas to poke his right. finger. Right. And he said, my Lord and my God. So there right. it's clearly Jesus is being declared as God. Of course, Jesus right. is not saying right. himself as you said. Right. These are coming, three, three, four verses which I came across. Yes. Yes. And uh, Jesus... 
does not deny what Thomas said. <laughs> he doesn't say, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I'm not God. <laughs> Uh, and uh, he accepts his worship. So uh, we can, you know, very clearly see God, uh, Jesus uh, claims divinity there. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I, uh, Bertie, yeah, I, I'm just coming to you. But, you know, there are there is uh, some people who would like to uh, argue on these points and say that uh, uh, Jesus, especially the the thing about uh, uh Jesus claiming he was before Abraham. Uh, some people would like to argue by saying that uh, Jesus, yes, was before Abraham because he was the first creation, right? He was a created being and he was the first creation. So that, that is why he was before Abraham. Uh, so that's how they bring up and, of course, uh, basically trying to reduce Christ to be a created being. So that is another issue. <laughs> right, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, after his resurrection, when they were walking uh, to Emmaus, uh, the, I think three disciples, and then Jesus joined them, and uh, they did not recognize, but he eventually they he came to know his God, and they they at once left and came back. But but what Jesus Christ mentioned to them, he opened their eye, you know, the eyes, opened the understanding to the. To the whole, uh, whole old, you know, the Old Testament, you know, the old, uh, the old test, Old Testament, you know, law comprising the law, the Psalms and the prophets, uh, teaching, and uh, which he said, all those were written about me. <laughs> yes, all those were written about me, you know, and uh, he opened that understanding and all that. Yes, and uh, yeah, another. What about the two great commandments? <laughs> Believe in the name of his son, you know, begotten son, Jesus Christ, and uh, love one another as I have loved you. You know, Jesus takes first place there. You know, the son is referring to Jesus Christ. Mm. And of course, father and I are one. Very, very obvious. The father and I are one. Anil, uh, you know, I think it's in the Gospel of John. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. And right. even Revelation, if you, even Revelation, if you read the first chapter, but the description of Jesus Christ, you know, is uh, marvelous there. Right. Yeah, we, we had used that verse. I'm not sure. Maybe you came a little later. Yeah. Proving, uh, yeah. proving he is uh, divine, proving he is God. Yes. Right. Right. I guess uh, there are, uh, I mean, uh, once again, um, the challenge uh, that is posed, um, sometimes... We have to be careful how we answer. Sometimes we fall into their trap and we should not answer according to how they are trying to pose the question. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other compelling, uh, you know, uh, aspects where Christ is uh, proved to be God? Yes, Bertie, go ahead. The word, I think it's in uh, an epistle of John, hmm. epistle of John, where he mentions, the, you know, the word became flesh. Or is it uh, the gospel of John? I'm not sure, but it mentioned that the word became flesh, yeah. and dwelt among us, you know, and uh, we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only, uh, full of grace and truth. You know? That yeah. is the gospel of John, yes. Gospel of John, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And and also, Rika, go ahead. Yeah, and when he gave his first sermon, he read from Isaiah, and then he said, "It is it is fulfilled today." So that he said that all that all that you have read about now is fulfilled in me. Yes. Uh, and even even uh, Zechariah can come in. Yes. Uh, even uh, even the de demons acknowledged him as the Holy One of God. <laughs> Right. The Holy Son of God. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I mean, uh, you, uh, many will take those verses and twist it, and then they say, "Oh, Holy One of God could be an angel, uh, could yeah. be an archangel, mm -hmm. <laughs> a messenger," and that is how uh, uh, one particular faith likes to believe. They believe in Jesus, but only as a messenger, uh, not uh, as you know. When they say Son of God, that's only you know something uh, like a Messiah. But not a not God, right? So, um, uh, 
of course they deny that uh, the, the you know the son of god that is from the scripture from the bible but they deny even that so yeah. you know in uh, john uh, uh, john 5:18 verse 18 yes uh, he says therefore the jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the sabbath but also said that god was his father making himself equal with god <laughs> Now, of course, that equal God means that he is God. But again, as you said, people will say, well, equal with God doesn't mean that he is God. He is God, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that is uh, definitely one uh, major stumbling block for many people. Uh, and a lot of Christian sects, some, you know, so-called Christian groups also deny uh, the divinity of Jesus. Uh, and one of the more popular ones are the Jehovah Witnesses uh, who say that he was the first creation of God and not God. So um, I think we used to, I'm just trying to think what we used to teach uh, from the WCG days. Uh, we denied the Trinity. We said the Trinity is not true. But uh, I think we always believe Jesus was God. Mr. Rao, would you would you remember how we how we how did we teach God, uh, prove God? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we used to say, uh, God, I mean to say, uh, unmute yourself, Mr. Rao. We used to say that uh, um, God the Father and God the Son both were gods, right? But they were two separate beings. Correct, sir. We never denied Jesus. We believe that he is God and he is Savior. No doubts about it. Okay. Okay. But I think I distinctly remember uh, mm -hmm. the uh, we used to say yeah, he was God, but he became the son of God after being born as a human. I think that's yeah. how we explain. Because he was born a human and became the son of God only then. He was not like not, you could not refer to him as son of God before that. I think that is how we used to teach. Yeah, but there are verses yeah. that say he existed before creation. So yeah, right. So people take different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, In fact, understand. yeah. In fact, Paul says it is he who created. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus yeah. is the one who created. So uh, everything that is seen and unseen. So <laughs> I mean, it covers everything. But did we uh, deny the Trinity? I don't remember that. I thought we <laughs> believed in the Trinity, right? Uh, we, 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 when we say we denied the Trinity, we used to say that the Holy Spirit is the power of God, the force of God, and God is not three persons, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We never used to say that. Only God, the Father, and God, the Son, but Holy Spirit is the force of God or the spirit of, what do you call it, uh, the power of God, you know? Or so oh. the Holy Spirit, we deny the pers personhood of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, even in the, in the, uh, can I come in, Mr. Sakura? Go ahead, please. Yeah, even in the, in the Old Testament, somewhere, I think in the prophet's writing, it's mentioned that uh, his name shall, referring to Jesus Christ, his name, uh, a prophetic message, yeah. that his name shall be called, the, uh, his name shall be the mighty God. He, Jesus even called the everlasting father. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah, right. Yes. His name shall be, uh, you know, called the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, wonderful yeah, counselor. Right. All describing Jesus, Jesus yes. Christ. Yeah. And Emmanuel means God with us. Yes. God with <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, these are uh, very unique teachings of of Christianity, and uh, you know, and these are the what these are things that will distinguish Christianity from many other faiths. So, um, uh, yeah, I suppose only only God can bring ultimate conviction. The Holy Spirit can bring conviction about that. Good. I think uh, uh, I just wanted to. Praveen, <laughs> Praveen hasn't yeah. spoken. <laughs> Praveen. Yeah. yeah, feel free. I think Suryamurthy, you have something to say. Go ahead. Pastor Praveen. <laughs> Last time, 
I have brought up another point. Okay. While reading the Old Testament, many times I am confused about whether God is Father is speaking or Jesus is speaking. Because New Testament says that uh, Jesus is the one who was leading yeah. was speaking. Right. Uh, yes, that is another huge controversy. I guess, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Yahweh, uh, you know, the Old Testament reference to God, Yahweh, uh, some say that was Jesus. Uh, some say that was God the Father. Uh, well, maybe we should take another, maybe, we, you know, Let's file this away and we'll take another study. And I was thinking of bringing up those verses, hmm. but I could not find time to read the read them. Okay. Tell you what, we'll we'll discuss God of the Old Testament. Is God of the Old Testament? You know, who is the God of the Old Testament? Ravi, uh, Franklin, go ahead. Uh, please unmute yourself, Franklin. Praveen, could you help him? I think he's uh, struggling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Pa Pastor, sir, I'd like to give Pastor Praveen the, the first opportunity to speak. <laughs> okay. If Pastor Praveen has something to say, he will say it. But do you have anything to say? <laughs> no, sir. I, I will add my, uh, my contribution. Yeah, go okay. ahead. And then he, he, okay. and he will uh, elaborate. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, Christ's divinity is connected with Trinity, sir. Okay. Uh, if you accept Trinity as as a uh, valid, then uh, by uh, implication, uh, Jesus Himself is a divine. Okay. That is observation number one. A second observation I want to say is that uh, I think the, Jesus said, "I am the light." Sir, in the New Testament, yes, right. Says so. Yeah. Sir, now it is interesting to know, sir, how the word light is uh, described. Uh, he in the following three chapters, sir, he describes light as life, love, and truth. Mm -hmm. Now, take each of the, each separate, uh, there's a full chapter explaining what light is. It, mm -hmm. it means life, it means love, and it means truth. Okay. So, when you study, when you make an in-depth study of all these three components, uh, you can easily conclude that Jesus is divine. Okay. And uh, now, uh, if I can skip to my favorite uh, scientific angle, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, sir, I want to show you, sir, that uh, the uh, science proves Christ, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, God or sign or Christ is the creator, is the sustainer and the redeemer. Now, point number one, sir, I'll be very brief. Sir. Point number one, God is the creator. The Big Bang uh, conclusively proves Christ, Christ is the creator. So the, what happened was for 2000 years, no, sir, the world believed the universe and the life universe existed as a in a static or a steady state theory. The universe always existed, will exist and will ever exist. There was no beginning, there was no starting. But uh, with the coming of George Lamentry, a Belgium pastor and a scientist, and with the coming of Albert Einstein and, you, and uh, Edward Hubble, the entire uh, philosophy and paradigm of uh, creation changed. Mm -hmm. Uni the universe had a beginning, there is a creator. Now, coming to his next point, sir, I will leave that. I will not explain Big Bang. Coming to my second point, that uh, Christ is the uh, sustainer. Sir, uh, uh, God, from, day, from the day of creation till today, I mean, the laws of uh, the universe sir, operate independently, whether you like it or not, whether you ac accept it or not. Now, the, the laws of uh, the universe, the laws of the uh, nature all, op operate automatically from day one. By day one, I mean that it is the day of creation. Mm -hmm. Now, the best way to show is, no, sir, uh, let's take about the law of uh, decay, sir, the, what we call in science as the second law of thermodynamics. Sir, our cars yeah. are deteriorating. Our Franklin, we are talking about Christ being God. I mean, yes, can, you, can you bring that angle in? Yes, I'm coming to that. The third point, I'm going to cover that exactly. Yeah. No, sir, I want to show you that you know, Christ is the sustainer. I said, like God, is, Christ is the ruler, Christ is the creator, and he's the sustainer. He sustains the laws of the universe. 
and that is why sir the the law of dk continues the second law of thermodynamics is in operation to today now coming to my last point sir redemption christ is a redeemer sir uh, sir we don't have eternal security on our own christ has to step in god's plan of redemption began much more before creation before the creation itself god set his plan of action before creation began in other words sir god wants to have a redemptive relationship with you and me in love he created the universe in love he gives uh, you the the freedom of choice to accept his offer of eternal life and uh, god created us with the capacity to uh, receive exponentially receive love and express love thank you that was the last point i had mentioned that christ it is through christ we have redemption right? yeah but thank you franklin yeah i mean uh, uh, uh the the, law, the laws of christ i mean yeah. uh, will take its toll i mean yeah. you and i are destined to uh, perish and one day we will die slowly but surely but now the the problem of redemption comes in the incarnation answers that question oh, yeah, ex yes exactly yes, yeah. yes okay good good Ravin, everybody is dying to hear from you. Can you say hi to everyone? <laughs> uh, thank you all. Yeah, I would like to, uh, I may like to share a couple of thoughts, but um, uh, I would like to request you to keep your uh, stones. If you have any stones nearby, please keep them away. Uh, you know, I'm the only father to, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm only one at home. Uh, <laughs> People raise the question saying, have ever Jesus said, I am God and all? And let me ask a question. Did any time in the Old Testament, anywhere in the scripture, God ever said that he is God? Mm -hmm. And the reality is, yes, Surya Murthy, sir. In the Old Testament, he has said he is God. Yes. The reality is in Old Testament there is no word called God. There is word called Elohim. There is word called Lord, Jehovah. He says, I am Elohim and Elo nobody else. Elohim, that's all. I but am Elohim and nobody else. Elohim is not, it does not. Elohim is a specific word. Elohim is a specific. Elohim is the word that describes a quality of God. But Elohim itself is not God. Elohim means Almighty. That's all. El Shaddai is there, all powerful. So these are words. There are. There is no description. There is no definition to be given for God. That is the reason. Even in the Old Testament, everywhere God used introduced Himself with various names like this, various words like this. Most of the times, these words. That God also does not introduce himself. These are the words that are humans added, like Jehovah Jireh kind of thing and Jehovah Nisi kind of things. So there are certain places God revealed himself with certain, some of his qualities, but nowhere a clear, complete description or definition of he God. Has given, he has given himself a name. He has given himself a name. That is uh, Jehovah. But, uh, that is specific. That is a specific word. That word you cannot apply to anybody else. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, it's a big study uh, we have to go through. Actually, yeah, God does not have... Smart study, the meaning is very clear. It is a specific word that can apply only to the creator and it cannot be applied to anybody else. That is true. I'm not against that. Absolutely true. So that means but... he is saying he is God. <laughs> Again, your, your words only I'm telling, sir. I'm not saying that the, those words do not uh, refer to God. Those words refer to God. Only God can be addressed with those words. Only God can be addressed with any of those connotations or any of those words. But the definition of God was not there. Uh, definition complete cl with clarity was not there in the Old Testament also. These are describing some qualities of God. You want a and definition? If, well, what? What definition according to Oxford Dictionary or what? Um, it cannot be defined. Yeah, I'll, I'll share God cannot you. be defined. That is the reason. That is the same thing I'm bringing forth, sir. Hmm. That is the same so, thing. I'm but bringing. he has very clearly said, I am Yahweh. That is what also not it? his name, sir. That is also not his name. It is his name. 
it is it is his name. You give me time, my next time I will show you. That then would, what? I'll that show would be you. Great. That would be a wonderful. He says that it is his name. Uh, <laughs> okay, sir. I'll, I'll bring for some more sources also. But uh, this is my thought. Basically, I would what I would like to say is, uh, if you read in the Old Testament, most of the times the uh, word used in the place of God or Elohim, Yahweh, these kind of things, these are some kind of descriptions of God. But it is not complete name of God. Even early church also believed that God does not have a name. God doesn't have a name. The early church very strongly believed that. Jesus Christ, in his model prayer, he says, Hallowed be your name. Ah, yes. You... He has a name. <laughs> then, uh, yeah, th this is a very big uh, study. And, uh, no, it's a very small thing. Not a big study. See, God has written many things which are very simple. Which can be understood very, very Yeah, very what we'll do is, uh, Suryamurthy, what we'll do is, I mean, maybe we can have another uh, session on this. But uh, uh, since time is now running out, uh, maybe, uh, Praveen, you can make your point and then we will look at how we can explain this later. <clears throat> uh, the word God is, in, in Old Testament, many places, uh, I mean, in, in place of the word God, many other names are, may, many other words are used which are describing the various qualities of God, which can be referred only to God. And no one else can be taken those words. That is exactly true. But even uh, so, because of that, we cannot ask a specific question saying, have ever God said that he is God? And did Jesus ever say that he is God? Because the word God itself is not even God, actually philosophically talking. You know, the, the word God itself cannot describe God. There is no word that can describe God. There is no name that can describe God. There is nothing that can be, the word can be used to completely de define God. That is the reason the question by ask, the quest, asking the question, did ever Jesus said he is God itself will become a flaw. It is a, it is a wrong question because there is the God himself, the word God itself is not description of God, basically. Uh, so there is no one who can ask such question, but who can only find the we can only find the divine qualities, div the fullness of divine qualities in uh, you know uh, those things only we can see in Jesus, and we can consider Jesus as divine. But we cannot say any time. Uh, that's the reason uh, may, many times Old Testament also, uh, uh, you know. Uh, well, the word in basically let me basically saying is the word God is not there in the Old Testament. May various other words are there. Asking Jesus this question also become wrong. That's what I thought. Yeah, about. yeah. I think uh, what you're saying is that uh, you know I mean, uh, you know, uh, divinity. We are we are trying to describe divinity. Yeah. There is no one name that can describe divinity as as such so yeah that is uh, uh that is as what Pra Praveen was trying to say but anyway we'll, we'll bring up some of these thoughts a little yeah. later uh, next time you give me 10 minutes i will tell you how the names of name of god in the old testament <laughs> god himself says this is my name yeah. right so you have to give me five five minutes my minute five minutes next time Right. I think uh, what you uh, you know what you say, what you're describing, uh, Suryamurthy, is you're describing divinity. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, everybody has one name. <laughs> uh, God has. If you say God has several names, what you're really saying is He's got so many qualities. Right? See. Mm -hmm. <coughs> anyway, let's look at that. I think we can bring it up later. I think we have already lost time. Uh, bring up some of these thoughts next time, and we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll take it from there. Okay, so um, let's close then. Thank you very much. It's always nice to have uh, you know discussions, but then uh, I don't want to detain anybody uh, with time. So Franklin, could you please lead us in a closing prayer? Yes, sir. Sir, but uh, let's let's. Uh, I think uh, Bertie wants to make some closing comments. Sorry, but uh, Bert, Bertie wanted to make a comment. Yeah, go ahead. No, it's not the last word. Yeah. It's not the last word. It's just my observation that if uh, Pastor Praveen knocks out his beard, 
he look more like a christian but right now is coming across to me like a muslim you know <laughs> yes sir, yes. i don't know where that came from but i think <laughs> we'll pass we we'll pass on it franklin not please the do the honors for us thank you not the last words just joking yes so shall we bow our heads in prayer gracious lord a loving father thank you so much father for this wonderful opportunity the technology you have given us lord even though we are living in far flung areas we are able to meet and then talk discuss and have our own convictions father checked and rechecked and confirmed thank you so much father. thank you lord for our pastors all our pastors who work hard and who, who try to give their findings so that to enrich us thank you lord for all of us lord who are able to meet on this platform thank you so much for that. thank you lord for helping us lord to follow the biblical instructions grow in knowledge and in the grace of our lord jesus Christ. and in that spirit lord we pray that you will fill each and every one of us lord with your with your love and we will realize father that you are in love and you want a redemptive relationship with us and you extend that relationship by giving us free choice to choose time and time again lord may we always lord allow your love to flow into us we reciprocate your love and we also lord allow your love to flow to all those around us thank you so much father lord we ask your blessings upon every one of us and we pray lord that you will make these studies a blessing to the larger christian community lord to those who are really interested in truth in learning and growing they will find help and they too will join us someday thank you so much lord we ask all this in the precious name of jesus christ amen 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 and have a good rest of the day god bless you all